And of course, there are still many unanswered questions about the coronavirus and how it attacks the body. Blood clots are turning up as a dangerous problem in some patients, and some studies suggest around 30 percent of seriously ill patients are developing these clots. And here in the U.S., doctors report strokes even in patients under 50. CBS News senior medical correspondent Dr. Tara Narula examines the troubling symptom and what may be a promising treatment. I didn't have an appetite. I did cough a little bit. In April, 33-year-old Warnell Vega thought he had a common cold until his symptoms quickly worsened. I went to go wash my hands right before turning on the water. I did feel a little dizzy. And then next thing I know, I was on the floor. At the hospital, Vega tested positive for coronavirus, and x-rays revealed another surprise, blood clots in his lungs. Vega and many other coronavirus patients, some unusually young, are experiencing blood clots. The clots are impacting blood vessels, large and small, arteries and veins all over the body, sometimes leading to life-threatening conditions like pulmonary embolism and stroke. Dr. Adam Sucker studies blood clotting at the University of Pennsylvania. Have there ever been any other viruses that cause this degree of clotting? No. The data that I have seen so far suggests that the risk of clotting with COVID-19 is greater than other infectious diseases that we have observed. A new observational study from New York's Mount Sinai Hospital suggests a potential treatment. Doctors found that treating hospitalized patients with blood thinners to avoid clotting may increase their chances of survival. Mount Sinai now preventatively treats most of their COVID-19 patients with blood thinners. Dr. Valentin Fuster is the director of Mount Sinai Heart. We found that anticoagulation decreased mortality, particularly in patients who were very sick. We are doing now a second study of 6,000 patients, and it appears we are validating what happened with the first 3,000? Blood thinners helped save Vega's life. He's out of Mount Sinai Hospital and recovering. What message do you have to other people in, about COVID or about surviving COVID? Um, if you do start feeling sick, please go get checked out right away because you, you never know. And Dr. Narula joins us now. Doctor, good morning. It's a fascinating piece and, and really high stakes for a lot of people. Uh, do we know why blood clots may be a complication of the virus itself? Well, Tony, this is really one of the biggest mysteries of COVID and really one of the emerging and untold stories. We're learning a lot more every day. There are probably a combination of factors contributing. The first is that we know that blood tends to clot when it's stagnant, when it's not moving around. So you can imagine an intubated, ventilated patient who's sedated or on a paralytic is a setup for that. There are also uh, issues with cytokine storm, which we've talked about, or this immune reaction, which can cause the blood to become hypercoagulable or very sticky. That can lead to clots. And then one of the most fascinating is that this seems to also be a disease of the blood vessels, not just the lungs. The same receptor that the virus uses to get into those lung cells is found on the lining of all the blood vessels, the ACE receptor. And so what we think is that the virus may actually be damaging the lining of the blood vessels, and that can lead to the clotting. So really, really interesting and fascinating. We're learning a lot. Yeah, very interesting. We saw the patient in your story was helped by blood thinners, and now there's research into that as a treatment for coronavirus. How might that change the typical treatment protocols for, for all patients? Well, that's why this story is so important, because we're learning that this is such a big part of COVID-19, the clotting, that using blood thinners has the potential to really impact so many lives from some of these really life-threatening complications like stroke and pulmonary embolism. We do need the research, though, to really tell us what type of blood thinners. We have several different kinds on the market. What dose do we give it IV or in the skin or orally? And how long do we give it? And so, as you heard, a lot of hospitals are already changing their protocols where they're they're giving higher doses than normal to COVID patients who are in the ICU, and patients are getting discharged for two weeks to a month on blood thinners to, again, prevent uh, the development of some of these clots. But we need those trials to better inform us. Yeah. Now, of course, there are people who are, are convalescing at home who have the virus. So I'm curious, for people in that situation, what are, what are the signs that a, a blood clot may be forming, and what, what should they do? 
Well, certainly some of the things that we worry about, so DVT or deep venous thrombosis, if they notice a leg that becomes warm or red or swollen or painful, that would be concerning for a blood clot in the legs. Pulmonary embolism, where we form those clots either in the lungs or they travel from the deep veins of the legs or the pelvis into the lungs. Chest pain, especially when you take a deep breath or shortness of breath. And then finally, stroke. So if you have weakness or numbness or lack of ability to move an arm or a leg or even your face, difficulty with speed, or vision, any of those signs should really prompt somebody to get attention quickly. All right, Dr. Narula, thank you very much.